Well, both. I mean, I think there's a lot of things that um, are fixable, and, and obviously the, the the execution has to be better. I think that's in, in all three phases. You know, when you lose, you know, that's how it is. And uh, certainly offensively, we have to, you know, remain, uh, understand who we are and how we have to stay efficient. And the difference in third and four and third and 10 or 11 is – is critical, you know. I mean, just our ability to uh, play the game in that fashion, much like we did um, against the Chargers. You know, we we weren't able to do that consistently enough um, yesterday. So, you know, our ability to to pick up and convert on possession downs at third and five or less, you know, is is really good. And then the third and you know ten pluses are two for twenty five, and that's just too many. Third and longs. How disappointed, how disappointed are you? How disappointed are you that your team, normally the more physical team on the field, wasn't able to do that yesterday? Well, I'm disappointed that we lost. You know, I mean, this isn't a battle of, um, you know, being the most physical or throwing for the the more yards. It's you know, again, it, it's about winning and losing. And I would say that that's where the disappointment is. Uh, then why? You know, we lost. We can, we can get into those factors, um, but in the end, it just you know none of it was good enough. And that's why I'm disappointed. Is that just that we lost? You guys were really focused on the officiating after the game. Um, you usually don't like to stick on that very long. Are you surprised that they did, or would you like them not to? I mean, they're free to you know, speak for themselves. That's what I do. Yeah, you know, when you gathered the guys around, uh, what, what was your primary message that you wanted to, them to take away? Well, that this is, um, you know, when you when you play like that, uh, you, you're gonna you're gonna lose, you're gonna get beat. Uh, so we have to understand that. We we have to realize why it is, you know, that we lost, and also realize um, that you can define your culture by what you look like when when things aren't great, when things don't go well. And uh, yesterday they didn't go very well. And we'll find out, you know, what kind of football team we have this week and what kind of individuals, what type of people we have here, which I believe in and, and who we are. So, you know, that was my message. It was, you know, wouldn't have a whole lot to say. Give them all credit. Uh, get back to work and, and don't think that anybody uh, did enough to, to help us win. You guys hit the run defense theme so hard and you defend the run well, but it, it does it, Two out of three times it hasn't hasn't equated to, to winning. No, we know that. We've talked about that for talking about it like it was that, like we did what we set out to do and stopping. Who's it. that? Jeff Simmons. Yeah, no, again, Jeff, Jeff's free to you know, a lot of respect for Jeff, and, and Jeff's free to say what you know, what he wants to and speak on you know, for what he thinks. And um, you know, we 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 knew I mean, the number one key was to affect the quarterback. You know, we didn't tackle them at least four or five times. So, again, we'll we'll, we'll stop the run when we need to. Um, you know, we've talked about this. We have to uh, we have to find ways to affect the quarterback, and and not just on third down. You know, on first and second down, and you know, so that that's what we're we're, we're aiming to do. When you have a game like that where you, you know you're facing some real studs on the outside, do you have to be careful not to overreact to the? the one-on-one losses that were lost on the edges? Or yeah, I mean, there were some one-on-one losses. There were some one-on-one wins. Um, you know, you, you look at, you know, the, the one that's probably, you know, one's a second and 12, you know, probably come back here. I'm sure Ryan wished he would probably not to look the guy off and just throw it out to Derek, you know, down in the red zone was second and 12. You know, the other ones are third and long situations. One was a second and two. Uh, that created the the third and long, and that's a you know a play action protection that that we've done multiple times. Uh, so again, if we can stay uh, efficient and be able to uh, not not turn it into a drop back passing game, which against the the type of players that they have, is no small task. And you know I think we'll we'll all be better. You said you're doing some shuffling maybe up front, or do you think you can win? Well, we'll continue to look and see, you know, what's what's best and you know, where guys go. But you know, as it stands here right now, today, I don't don't 
see something changing until we, you know, have some more time to visit on it tomorrow and see who's available, see who's healthy, and, and see, find a way to beat the Bengals. What's the challenge of staying efficient offensively and ahead of the chains when they're loaded up? Well, yeah, well, we gained nine yards, and then we run, you know, Main and Tajay bounces out a, you know, a gap scheme run, which, you know, he's hit a couple of those. And I think against the fast team, I think he realized probably can't bounce that out. But, you know, we give him the ball, we give Derek the ball, and, you know, they make the decisions. And so then that created, you know, another third and long. You know, I think we, we might have picked it up. It wasn't too long, but um, it, it's about just making sure that you're, you're capitalizing on your opportunities, that, that, you're, that you're able to get into drives. If you, know, if you can't get into drives, then, then some of the plays and the formations uh, don't necessarily complement each other. And that's our whole goal is to, is to try to get them all to complement and be balanced and, you know, have, have a run game that, that helps and, you know, gets Derek what he needs and Tajay can supplement that and you know the passing game where you know some of those contested catches like you know we come down with one we get a DPI and then you know then there's some some drops and some some misses How often did that happen with Derek that game with Tajay was were there holes there in the run game that you thought the Oh no there weren't two there weren't a whole lot I mean there there were there were some I just I meant Tajay as his skill set throughout spring and in the first couple games, you know what I mean? Where, hey, you can design a play, but you know, we tell them run where they're not and uh, try not to overcoach a, a running back that has vision. And so I just was using that as an example that he, he may have gotten away with it against uh, a couple other opponents. And he realized that, you know, yesterday, you know, when he, when he tried to bounce it outside that they, they, they caught up with him. There's so few yards to be had, Mike. That, that you cool with DeAndre sliding there, or you want a, a, a receiver to try to gain every yard he, he can at the end of a run? I don't think that that. I mean, made a good catch. You know, try to take care of the football, and I'm sure he'll have plenty of chances to to catch and run and help us. Is that a body maintenance thing for him in that particular? Uh, you'd game? have to ask DeAndre. I could speak for him. That drive you had just before halftime, you guys were chipping on Miles mm -hmm. Garrett most of the way down, and you got in the red zone. And you kind of got away from it. What was? Did you just have a play where it was supposed to get the ball out quickly? Or well, you just get. You know, I mean, like talked about last night. You just some of those red zone concepts. You know, they're trying to get guys out to spread the field, and you know, didn't didn't work out for us on that particular play. You know, we'll have to we'll have to have an answer. You know, for that. Uh, something that we know that the ball's got to go in the end zone or it's got to go out of bounds. Um, you know, th those are those are critical. You know, that, that that's you know, the end of the half and being able to get three points and, and hopefully come back in the second half, get regrouped, going there with a little bit of, uh, you know, just energy and confidence that you went down there and scored. And so that's uh, – it didn't turn out that way. Back this week, and if so, I'm sure there's a chance, but I don't know what, how big or how small the chance is. The, the, the last TD pass was that just a miscommunication. Yeah, it was a misexecution. Okay. Yeah. Christian supposed to cover the guy. Is uh, Nicholas back in the building? He tomorrow? is in the building. Yep, and he's allowed to meet. He's allowed to work out. He's allowed to condition, train uh, by himself, but he can be in meetings, uh, and he can't be at practice or attend games. Be like in, in terms of ramp up for for the return. I imagine that he can will be working out and he'll be training by himself with the strength and conditioning staff. I imagine that he'll be in meetings and I imagine that he won't be at the games or practice. With Hassan's case being dismissed, you are you anticipating him being removed from the exempt list anytime? I, it's not my exempt. I, that it's not my exempt list. I mean, I'd try to help you out, guys. I, I would have no idea. In the past, when, when back when AJ was here, if you remember, he had the issue with, uh, you know, considering contemplating suicide. Um, Chris Hubbard ha has had a friend who, who he lost to suicide. Have you got to talk to him at all uh, about that, especially with this being Suicide Awareness Month? Uh, no, but uh, but I but I will. And I didn't I didn't know. Um, I hadn't been aware of that. And again, we. Uh, Mental health is critical. Our ability to um, 
take care of ourselves and what we need to, to be uh, happy and healthy and, and function, you know, again, be a lot of attacks on the Tennessee Titans and our players and our coaches. And, you know, that's just a small example. I mean, we play a game here. So we, we're we going to try to win and we're going to do everything we can and we're going to improve. And uh, But we're also, you know, we're going to be mindful of of our mental health and, and, and our physical health. With him being a veteran in that group, you know, with a lot of He's been a great guys. addition, by the way. Yeah. Chris has been a great addition. That, that's what I wanted to ask you, how he's been able to come in and kind of I think he's just a veteran. You know, he spent time in two good organizations. He spent time in Pittsburgh, uh, in Cleveland. Um, have always seen him from afar, but uh, res really respect the, the person that he is and, and how he's come in and, um, you know, er earned a position on his team and, and just continuing to, to, to work. Was Sean in the protocol or did he get cleared? He was not placed into the protocol. Mike, the exploits that you've given up defensively have all come against your past defense. Is that a function of how good you are against the run, how much teams throw, and how much of it, when they do happen, is a guy making a play, maybe like Amari on the sideline yesterday? Okay, so yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, I think that there's, um, you know, unfortunately, that's the categories that we lump them into, right? Did, did we just get beat? You know, were we in, you know, close proximity or maybe our technique was poor? Did we have a communication error like what occurred um, maybe in, in, against the Chargers? Or did we just have a, a, a mental error uh, like maybe what occurred yesterday at the end of the game? You know, just, just playing quarters coverage and, you know, thinking that Hook was going to take them. And, you know, that's – so, again, there's no easy answer to that. I, I apologize. I know that that's – not what you're looking for. We, we know that, that that has to stop. You know, we talk about making them earn it. Um, you know, part of that is affecting the quarterback with, with a pass rush or getting them off the spot, or when you do get them off the spot, being able to, to get them on the ground. So I think it all goes hand in hand. It's just not the, just not the guys in coverage. It's, it's the guys up front, and that's how we have to look at it, and that's how we have to coach it. Maybe no easy answer, Mike, too, for the offense. You scored three touchdowns through three games so far. Is it? Do you look at tweaking the scheme? Is it just no execution? Is it all the – like, how do you go about trying to – Well, I think we want to make sure that we're as efficient and as confident and, and as uh, urgent and decisive as we possibly can. You know, So looking in, through the first three games, what we've done well – thing that, you know, when we look at it, do the players uh, look like they're they're executing it with confidence, right? Whether it's, you know, positive play or just a couple yard gain, you know, but it looks like they, they know what they're doing. And I'm not talking analytics and saying it was a 10 yard gain because of missed tackle. It's, it was a 10 yard gain because it was well blocked. Guys knew what to do. Guys were flying. They could adjust to whatever look that the defense gave us. Um, and I'm also going to think that, you know, I, I think the Saints and, and certainly the Browns are, are going to be two of the better defenses in the league. And, and the Chargers presented their problems. But on the road, you know, we, we – you have to be really good, you know, against those two defenses. We were not. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to get back to work. Man, we're going to – we're going to make sure that uh, we're doing everything for our players that, that help them and uh, help us, you know, move the ball, whether it's hit an X play or get down the red zone, you know, be locked in, know that they're probably going to pressure and, you know, after a turnover and, you know, that's, you know, we, to, for us to win, we have to be able to do that. We got a great turnover from SMB. Uh, we got to turn that into a touchdown on the 18 yard line. Are the double moves uh, affecting you guys more so than, than maybe in the past? And you know, anything that can be done more so against them? Um, I mean, get you know, get get your eyes on your man. You know that that's one way. Get there a little quicker in a pass rush. You know, but when you look in the backfield, you know you don't you don't really see the receiver. You know, covered it. You know, well against the Chargers, you know, got beat against against the Saints, and you know they probably ran a couple yesterday. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank Appreciate you. it. Come in the building. Uh, you watch the film, try to learn from the best you can from the mistakes. Uh, there were a lot of them out there, but you just learn the best you can and just you got to move on to next week. That's the thing about this league. It's, it's, a, it's a long season. You just got to keep going week by week. Chris, what goes more goes into those contested catches down the sideline, the kind of that you had yesterday and, and the team's made a couple times. What, what, are, what are some keys to, to coming down with those passes? Uh, first is trying to get in a good position to get your body to the ball. Uh, it's, when you see the ball in the air, it's just adjusting and getting in the right position to catch it. And at the end of the day, it's a, you want to you want to go out there and make that play for the team, help help the team the best you can. Uh, this like me and uh, D Hop talk about all the time. This is a league where you, there's a lot of contested catches, so you just gotta find a way to come down with that ball. How important are those for you guys, given some of your offensive struggles that you? make some of those downfield from, from time to time? I, I think it's very important. And just like last week uh, or the, the previous week, the home game, it helped us win the game. And in any situation that you can, you just got to try to get the momentum for this offense. So if there's a play out there to be made. We got to make it. Mike, Mike talked about how you find out about your culture, I guess, during tough times. Mm -hmm. what, what have you, uh, I guess, seen in the wake of yesterday's loss and how do you kind of anticipate this team kind of uh, rallying? Uh, after yesterday, um, even before this loss, I've since I've been here, I've noticed a different culture here of just guys who who love the game of football and who who want to be great. And just coming in here early, people are we're already here in, in the locker room, getting their stuff done, getting ready because we don't have meetings till till thirty. So people, but people are already in here, trying to get right and get ready for the next week. So that's the type of culture you see when when adversity hits. Nobody's with their head down. Nobody's out here blaming each other. We're just out here trying to work hard and fix it. Chris, how is the, how fine is the line in looking and, and, and trying to improve and fix something and, and beating yourself up about it and, and lingering too long on something? Yeah, I mean, like it's a very fine line. That's that's this NFL. Sometimes as players, you know, you're your toughest critic. Like when we watch the film, we 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 don't take it easy on ourselves. You're you're in there thinking about that one play you could have had, the one thing you could have done better. But it's it's we have coaches that help us to see the the bigger picture of how we can improve and not beat ourselves too much. And then at the end of the day, we have another game this week. We have to move on and get ready for this next game. So when you did watch it back today or yesterday, just what were the moments that stood out to you that, that you guys would have wanted to have back? Shoot, there's a lot of them. I mean, as personally as an offense, we just had to go out there and execute better. There was a lot of plays we could have made. Uh, we just gotta. We just we gotta finish these plays and go out there and just be better. Yeah, I mean that's not easy for any offense to convert. When you when you shoot yourself in the foot early and you're already putting yourself in a bad situation, third down is hard enough to convert. To make it even harder to to convert when you're third and five and plus, it's definitely not easy. Chris, that's a great defense they have, obviously. How many times yesterday do you almost just kind of have to tick your cap and say, like, that's Miles Garrett making a great play. He's a great player versus what you're talking about in the self-inflicted wounds? Yeah, I mean, you when you're going into a game and you're playing a player like that, you know he's going to make his his couple of the plays because you, you're not going to shut him down completely. That's he, he doesn't get paid the money he does. He's not the player he is if, if we were able to just X him out of the game plan like that. But at the end of the day, when the opportunity is given for us to take advantage of it, we have to, and that's what we fail to do. We always hear it's a 500 league, and here you stand a victory away from but being right where a lot of other people are going to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I mean, fans may feel like things are over, but, but you're a long way from that. Yeah, like I said, it's, it's a long season. There's a lot of games left. We, hasn't even, we haven't even played anybody in our division yet. So, I mean, we just got to take it each, each week and just tackle that game first, and then worry about what's next later. What have you used in your career, and you've been at this a while, when you take the hits to stay confident? Yeah, you just, when you go out and practice the next week and you, you go over those new plays and you're out there and you're connecting and you see the game plan coming together and it's working, that's when you get the confidence to go to next week. Like, man, that was just that week, that was that game. And this week we see this game plan and we see how we can do better. And like I said, practice is always how I've just got my confidence back going into the next week. At all for an offense when you have that big play to DeAndre, big play to yourself at the end of the half to then come up with no points, and how might that carry over into the second half and the rest of the game? Yeah, it, it sucks. I mean, that that was something you definitely, when you're in that situation, you want to get points at the end of it. But I mean, I think we're all pros here. Like, you can't linger on that. We go in the locker room and we're already looking for what we can do next because we knew we were getting the ball back, so we were out there trying to 
come up with like how we can get points on this next drive opening out. So I don't think anybody held their head down after that or was thinking about that. I think we were thinking about what was next, like how when we get this ball back, we can go down and try to get some points. For you personally, you talk about confidence in a game like that. Do you lose confidence when things are going bad or is there just a baseline that you gain confidence when things are going good? You talk about like personally? Uh, I don't... I don't think I lose confidence personally. You, you, it's almost like a more like a little bit of frustration because you know we can be out there doing a lot better than we are, and you get a little bit of frustration really. But uh, like I said, when we when you go into next week and you you get to watch the tape, you get to see it either wasn't as bad as it was or it wasn't as good as you think it was, and just go out and practice and just get back into the rhythm and get back into the flow of things. How big of a sense of frustration is there? building today knowing you haven't scored a touchdown in two of the three games and how confident are you that you fixed this week? I mean I don't think anybody's like that frustrated about it I was when I was talking about frustration I was talking about me personally but as a team I like I said dude, we got guys who want to come in here and work and like we have every confidence in everybody on our team that we have the ability to go out there and score points when we need to we just got to execute when the situation calls for it and we're going to get opportunities this week to do it and we just go out there and do it. Um, yeah, like him, like you said, we knew that he was a guy that can break tackles. Um, he's going to be elusive in the backfield when you get back there, so we have to gang tackle him. But he did a great job of just, you know, creating plays and making plays. And, um, you know, he just ended up getting in that rhythm, like you said, and then ended up winning the game. What happened on the last play with uh, the last touchdown with Cooper with, with you and Christian? Um, just a miscommunication. Um, that's kind of how this game comes down to. You have a split-second decision. One guy makes a certain move, a movement, and it changes your whole responsibility. So just a miscommunication between me and Christian. Um, well, that's something that we get to clean up and um, got to carry on to th this week. Bobby, when you look at the exploits, I think it's 12 now that you guys have given up all through the air. How many instances of it is a guy making a play, like a, maybe a one around mm. the sideline yesterday, versus a miscommunication or a bluff? Like, you know, is, is it tip your cap or is it really concerning what you guys are getting? I mean, obviously it's concerning. You don't want, you know, 12 X plays happening um, any point of the career or in the league, I mean, in the season, excuse me. Um, yeah, but like you said, it just comes down to a guy making a play. Um, it comes down to um, rushing cover at the end of the day. Um, our job is to cover the guys down the field and when the ball is in the air to, you know, make sure they don't catch it. Simple answer, but how do you guys get better at that? How do you get better at eliminating those? Um, just being comfortable with the ball in the air. Um, don't panic when the ball is in the air. Don't feel like you have to, you know, touch the receiver just because, you know, he, he gives wide eyes doesn't mean you have to get wide eyes. Just, you know, stay patient and trust your technique. Um, when he puts his hands up, you know, match his hand. What would you say is the overall vibe? You know, coming into work today, mm -hmm. what, what's the vibe from uh, your fellow players? Um, I mean, guys obviously are you know upset that we lost. I mean, we, that was a game that going into we felt like you know we had a chance to win. Um, we had a good game plan. Um, but guys, you know, guys are excited too. I mean, it's not the end of the world. You know, it's only it's about to be a week four. Uh, we got the Bengals this week. Guys are you know excited for the challenge that we have, and you know they're ready to get to work. Some of the guys yesterday they spoke about the the play better mantra that mm -hmm. you know is delivered to you guys and you guys deliver to each other yeah. what's what's your perspective of that um i think it just comes down to you know you got a job to do um we're all grown men um you just gotta look at your play i mean if you feel like um you're not doing what you're supposed to do and the coaches are saying that then obviously you know something has to change whether it's you know film study or you you know practicing harder or just whatever it is it's different for every guy but i'm um, at the end of the day like you said you just got to be better it's our job but do you feel it's getting to a point where it's like all right enough saying we got to be better we just got to be better. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they just got to do it. The little bit frustrating one is you guys have this long stretch of being so good against the run. A little frustrating that it hasn't necessarily converted into the, you know, into, into helping out the, the mm -hmm. pass defense as well. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we want to stop the run. Um, we want to continue to do that. And then just pass just the passing game. Um, like I said, it just comes down to guys making plays. Um, if they're going to throw the 50 50 ball, or I call it the, the 75 ball because it's either going to be a, a catch or a PI, you feel me? So it's going to go to the offense either way. So um, we just got to get better down the field um, and then just better communication so we can't have those, you know, X plays. Second week in a row, I guess those next opponents playing on Monday night. I guess you watched the Bengals tonight and then uh, you know a little bit about them playing yep. not long ago. What are maybe some of the challenges they present? Um, you know, they got Joe Burrow. They got, you know, good receivers on the outside. Jamar Chase is one of the best in the league. Um, they're going to be able to challenge you down the field. They're going to challenge you on one-on-one -on -one coverages. 
Um, they're going to run the ball. They're going to mix that in as well. But, you know, Joe Burrow is a guy that can create plays, and um, they're a team that's been successful the last couple of years. You guys have given up 300 yards pretty much through the air in, in all three games. How do you avoid the, the finger pointing with each other of, of, of getting it right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're not, we're not, we're a good group of guys. I mean, we get, we're all, we're all teammates, we're all friends, so we're not going to be pointing fingers at each other. We're going to come together, um, figure a way how we can, you know, stop the the passing game from getting carried away, um, going on to the next couple games. So um, we're going to come together, we're going to improve, and that's what we're going to do. The way it has gone though, like with the past defense, that because you and KB are like the leaders, like in, in the back end. Does mm -hmm. that mean like you guys maybe have to speak up more, or how how do you balance maybe? You know, knowing that you guys were leaders with also the fact that, you know, you guys yeah. are all tied in all that. Like, how do you maybe juggle all that? Um, I mean, just continue to, to be a leader um, the best way that we can. Whatever that every every guy um, takes leadership differently. Um, some guys you might, you know, have to be able to talk to and some guys you might have to talk to one on one. Kind of just, you know, hang out with them, sit down at lunch and have a conversation with them. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, like I said, we're all grown men. We all have a job to do. Um, and I'm pretty sure every guy knows that, you know, that they have to be better and that when what their job is is to uh, when they're on the field. PIs, are, are those the same kind of demoralizing as giving up a big play, or is there something different about a PI that feels more personal, more interactive, just kind of what is the feeling? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough because, you know, it's kind of like a fine line. You know, you want to be aggressive, um, especially with, with the receiver who is aggressive, but then you can't be, you know, too aggressive. I don't know, it's, it's just a fine line. you got to figure out how the refs are calling the game. Um, and they are those are X plays to me because they they start you know second in twenty five, and you give up a, a PI for thirty plus yards. So that's X play. Are the Bengals kind of a personal matchup for you guys. I mean, because you, you've had your issues with, with Joe and those guys. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know if it's personal on like a, a personal level like that, but they're a team that you know we we view as a, a great team and a team that we want to you know show up against and and beat and obviously when they come into town you know we're going to have a, a good challenge ahead of us